Hey guys, it's Lauren here. Thanks for stopping by my channel and checking out my latest video for the Hip Kick Club. Now I was, they challenged me again, this great team that I'm on always set these challenges really high. One And today they have not disappointed. They have challenged me to use a cut file. They have challenged me to add mixed media and something that I really don't enjoy doing. They've challenged me to add some stitching which I'm glad they did. I, as you saw, I just held up my cut file there and it says you and me, as you can see in the top corner there. I did this off screen because stitching takes me a long time and I just used some embroidery thread and I just stitched around that title to really, to just to add that, well, to tick the tick the challenge box, but also to add some beautiful sort of handmade feel to my title there. And to be honest, although it did take me a while, I actually am really loving the result. So we here it's been done. I also off screen made some butterflies and I just laid up some beautiful butterflies that I'm not sure I got it from a cut file. I'm not sure. I think it might have been a hip kick club one. Um, sorry guys, I can't be sure, but I just wanted to add something to bring this layout to life a little and I was doing some playing off screen. So I just laid up some butterfly there, wrapped some white cotton around the centers of them and puffed up their little wings and they came to life with some added little bonuses of some white pen on top of them. So you'll see me incorporate those in the layout. Now, because I was challenged to add some mixed media with all this goodness and all these challenges, I applied a just a thin layer of clear gesso over this pattern paper. Now, I love clear gesso. It is I, it's the, my go-to all the time. It's perfect for when I want to add mixed media to pattern papers. If I was using white gesso, then you would see the white, and I didn't really didn't want that effect on, on, on this layout. Now, I also grabbed out some of the cards from this month's Project Life Kit. Now, we've got some really great sizes coming through with the Project Life Kit, and these two cards here were, were two of those cards that I just thought will be perfect for highlighting these photos of my little girl. My little girl this week was not feeling the best. She had some temperatures and a bit of a chesty cold but there was nothing better than this little puppy who gave her lots of snuggles to make her feel better. So I ended up just capturing these couple of little pics while they were laying on the floor in the lounge room on a mattress watching some TV and um, yeah I just thought I'm going to scrapbook this little moment because this puppy brings so much love and makes her feel so wonderful. So here I am, I'm just playing around with my setting up. This is, I do this all the time. If you're a regular to my, my channel and my videos, you see me, I always place out first and then I get a bit of a, a guide of what I want to do, what embellishments I want to use and where it's sort of all going to sit. You'll see me in a second here, I'll wipe it all off and I'll move it all away and I'll add my mixed me media elements there. I apologise, that's my little fur ball barking. She thinks she's... Just the boss of everything and even a bird flying past, she will have a have a bark at. So hopefully she doesn't disturb this voiceover too much. And um, <laughs> you, oh, here she is. Just, to, just hang on a second. Elsa, no barking. No barking. Uh, I think she's coming in to sit at my feet, which is usually her her spot. So I guess it's nice. Her little voice just made an appearance there, which highlighted these photos and this moment. I guess she just wanted to be part of all the YouTube action. And um, yeah, so welcome, Elsa. Welcome to the video. <laughs> so here I am. I'm just making my layer. And now I'm going to have a little play with these cute little pots of Magicals powder. Now these products are from Lindy Stamp Gang and in this month's kit, which is the August kit, uh, August 2019 kit, the um, we got three little powders and these are two of the two of the powders that came. The purple one's called Teapot Purple and the pinkish peachy colour is called Rambling Rose Pink. We also got a yellow which is Golden Sleigh Bells. I think that's what it was called. So these these um, these colours, I was a little bit nervous about how they'd blend and 
how they would sit on the paper. And as you can see, that purple is not quite the same purple as um, what you see on that um, color palette that I'm working with in the center of my page. So I'm just testing them out. And as you can see on camera, it looks a little bit more blue. It's not, it's, it doesn't, bear with me, I'm not going to make a disaster. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to add, because I was challenged to, add some mixed media elements just a little bit here or there. The beautiful thing about mixed media and adding a little bit of mixed media to your layouts is it creates a little bit of dimension between your page and your photo or embellishment cluster. It just creates that bit of depth. We, we create depth in lots of ways in scrapbooking. We use foam tape, we use mixed media, we use layers of pattern paper, we use cut files, we use lots of things to create different levels. And mi adding mixed media to your page is just a simple way of creating another level and another guide. So here I am just adding the purple now. As you can see, just by mixing it with that peachy pink color, I've managed to sort of create that purplish tone that you see in that color palette on that pattern, on that, on that card, Project Life card there. So it, see, it didn't end up blue, which is lovely. <laughs> it did end up matching really well. So I'm just adding some splatters there just to make it a little bit more magical. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, and that also um, helps my butterflies come to life with a little bit of mixed media sprinkles around. And I'm just drying that off. Now, because I added the gesso to the page, I, I was able to sort of apply a fair bit of product without it so soaking through and also without warping my page too much. There is a little bit of a warp that's going to happen with any kind of mixed media scrapbooking but it really isn't too much and that gesso really sort of gives that solid base to mixed media so I try there so here I am wanting to add another layer wanting to build my dimension on my page so I've just used some foam tape there just to adhere to the back of that those cards and I've stuck it on so I'm just having a look now at placing out where these photos are going to sit do I need to add board? This is what I'm thinking. Do I need to add borders around my photos? Are my photos going to stand out or am I going to lose the photos? Now, that that is an important thing to me. This, as you can see here, I'm just creating a frame here because this photo where she's looking directly into the camera is the one photo that I really wanted to highlight um, because that's sort of the main photo. It's the main, even Elsa is looking in the camera she's a good little puppy and so I just wanted to add a bit of a bit of a border on that so I didn't lose it in all my embellishments that I'm about to apply the embellishments in these kits this August kits are overload they are full of florals butterflies leaves oh, pumpkins acorns you, you name it it's got oodles and oodles of embellishments which make this kind of scrapbooking really easy because no matter what you use it will work layering up adding clusters here and there it, all these embellishments will just come together this kit was designed so perfectly it really surprised me when I started creating this layout how all these embellishments just sort of work together and made made clustering and made embellishing this this layout really, really easily. So how are you going with me? I know I'm doing a lot of talking and, you, you know, I, I really want to get your feedback on, um, you know, how do you find my videos? Do you find them, um, do you find that I'm teaching you anything or do you find that they're more just you're enjoying them for watching me put do the process together. Would you like me to do more step-by-step -step instructions? Because I know that some some videos people really enjoy me just talking about or other other YouTubers because I don't do it that often talking about the process. So, I'm, so an example of that would be me now saying, um, okay, now I'm going to um, put my cut files on. And I'm using a wet adhesive here. This is my favorite adhesive, Tombow glue, just to apply some glue to the back of those and layer under my main cluster. So as you can see, that's a sort of a different tone to what I normally do. But I'd really love, I would love your feedback. If you'd like me to talk through my process as opposed to talking about my process, 
let me know in the comments below because I really want to make sure my videos are helpful and make sure that they're teaching you something, they're inspiring you and, um, and also just in, enjoy getting to know me and I want to enjoy getting to know you so those comments are really important to me. Um, so here we go. So I'm just now, it's, as you can see, it's coming together. I've added a couple of cut files there, some floral embellishments, and I'm just using some wet adhesive to apply my title. Now, often I put do my title last, but because it's sort of a main feature and I've used that s stitching and that, you know, was part of my challenges, I really wanted to... I felt this was the time to sort of get that positioning right and then add those extra embellishments sort of around it. It is such a big feature and I wanted that positioning to be perfect so it didn't take away from my photos but also highlighted the all the work that I'd done. <laughs> so I, I think I'm really happy with how this one's sort of coming together. The more embellishments I'm applying, the more it's building, the more depth it's giving. And I'm really focused on not letting all these embellishments overtake the photos. Using black and white photos is a great idea when you're really wanting photos to sort of pop off the page or your photo the color tones in your photos don't match the collection that you're really wanting to use so I just I suggest sort of playing around with printing off some photos in black and white and seeing the difference that it makes in your scrapbooking when when it is a particular collection or a particular theme of um, scrapbooking that you're trying trying to use or wanting wishing to use um, so these photos in black and white were perfect for that. Sorry, there's my head. I just really wanted those butterflies to sit properly and wiggle them around and puff up their wings. Um, as you can see, I've left the little cotton strands just sort of whimsically sitting around. I also left the tassels on the ends of my stitching. So where I finished the you and the me, the, the ends that I've had to snip off, I, I've left them sort of exposed. It just sort of gave it a bit more hand, not polished. I didn't want it to look polished. I wanted it to look, to look handmade. I wanted it to look a little bit not finished. I wanted it to look alive. And so, and I think by just adding those little bits of sort of, elements where things don't look as finished as they normally would sometimes can create that effect so here I am I had this little space down the bottom and I knew that I was going to add some journaling there but I just absolutely love these gorgeous thickers they are just so bright and happy and I love that there's patterns on the letters this is from the new Paige Evans collection I think it's called Truly Grateful and I just this was my first layout using them. I just really wanted to use them. And I was thankful that the letters for love were all in the color tones that I was using on this layout. So I've just had to pop them under there. And um, although you can't see it all, although some of the V's tucked away and some of the E and the O, you can still see that the word love is in the title. So that's another way of creating dimension. You can see that that's lower than the title and it really sort of brings the layout to life and helps it sort of jump off the page. The other little new little treat that we got this month are these was sort of like a little embellishment pack once again from the Paige Evans collection. It's a pink paisley collection. Um, and were these gorgeous little, little tiny flat enamel hearts and I just thought I, I hoard lots of yummy things these were definitely in the do I hoard these things or hearts or or what these were definitely up there in that thinking and I thought no Lauren go for it this layout is just really coming together the way you'd hoped so this is the layout you want to use all your beautiful products on and so I just went hell for leather I went heart crazy I just went yep they're going everywhere anywhere I feel I want to put a heart I was sticking a heart <laughs> so there you go my layout sort of finishing off now I'm about to add my journaling um, and I hope that you like I hope that you like it I hope it's inspired you to do some stitching I hope it's inspired you to play with those beautiful magical powders that came in the color kit and I hope that's inspired you to maybe stitch on a cut file and see how that goes um, if you've not heard of the hip kick club all the details are below it's a great 
scrapbooking subscription kit company and we have lots of fun creating every month all those details are outlined in the description below and if you're new to my channel welcome I hope that you have been inspired by the layout I've created and consider becoming a subscriber to my channel if you're one of my regulars thank you for watching my videos I'd love a like and if you'd like to share it with your friends that really helps my channel as well all right guys take care Keep scrapping. Bye.